Uh, recently, we did a shirt with Nine Line Apparel, uh, Remember Every Dog Deployed with Military Working Dog Rosso. And Rosso is a dog that served our country, United States Air Force, did 10 missions with the U.S. Secret Service, was deployed to Operation Inherent Resolve overseas, protected the president in Japan, and has an Air Force Accommodation Medal. And when his service was done, he did not have anywhere to turn to. In fact, he was going to be euthanized because of his behavioral issues. And we were given a call at Project K9 Hero to take Rosso in, and he lives out there at this facility. And the important thing to know about it is, that is his home. That's where he's going to remain for the remainder of his days and we're going to take care of him and that's what we're trying to build out there. My name is Jason Johnson and I'm the founder of Project Canine Hero. We're a national nonprofit that helps take care of retired police canines like you be here in military working dogs with medical care, food, and death benefit assistance once they leave service. We also help with rehabilitation and rehoming. What well, most people don't know that when a police canine or a military working dog leaves service, not every one of them has a home to go to. So we started a national nonprofit to help care for these heroes in retirement. We help make sure that every canine that serves our country has a place to go once they're no longer in service. I started in the United States Army in 1993 as a military police officer. After serving five years in the U.S. Army, I was able to go right into civilian law enforcement. There I started putting on the bite suit, taking bites from dogs, working with the different canine units until I was able to get a position as a dog handler. And once I got a dog handler position, I thought it was just the greatest job in the world. Uh, my first partner's name was Flash, who we have two children's books named after. Canine Flash Becomes a Hero. And canine Flash is a hero's hero, both available on our website. And she really taught me the essence of working a dog and what it meant to have that partner, to get up every day and to go to work and have somebody you could rely on, have a partner in the car with you and feel that you are on top of the world, that you are unstoppable and that nothing was going to get past you that day. And from there, uh, I took that experience and went over to Iraq and then on to Afghanistan. And I did missions for the U.S. government from everybody, from the ambassador to the secretary of state, presidents of foreign nations. I cleared rooms in buildings and meetings to make sure that anywhere they went, it was safe from explosives. I did over 125 red zone missions there in both countries. And after serving over overseas, I started working for the ATF in Washington, D.C. area. There I had opportunity to train over 2,000 working dogs with various government agencies, United States military, and foreign countries. After working at the ATF, I went over to the Department of Homeland Security where I worked with the passenger screening program, working with explosive dogs that you see in our airports across America. It was then when I realized that all these working dogs that I worked with in my first 24 years of service, almost 2,000 of them, didn't have help in retirement. That after they served our country, nobody was there to care for them and help them with their medical care. So I started Project Canine Hero in 2016, and to date we've helped care for over 130 canine heroes, and we are serving heroes in almost every state in America. At Project K9 Hero, we have so many dogs in our program. Uh, average day could be making sure medical bills are paid. Some nights we have dogs that have to go to the ER. You know, maybe there may be a dog in Texas who had an incident overnight where we got him get up and make sure the bills are paid, that um, they have our credit card on file, that all the dogs in our program are being taken care of, that food is being delivered to their homes from our sponsors of Sport Dog Food, and that we're rehabilitating the dogs at our facility. Out at our facility in Tennessee, we have 177 acres where we help rehabilitate and rehome retired police canines and military working dogs. Every day I'm out there personally working with the dogs, making sure that they're getting the proper exercise, the proper nutrition, and the proper rehabilitation in their retirement so they can live the life they deserve. I think as a veteran, it's important that we're giving back to the veteran community. I would say the biggest challenge is running a nonprofit is just trying to make sure you're doing everything correctly. Uh, when I started it, you know, my background was in military, police, and government service. I didn't know anything about running a nonprofit. But there was other veterans out there that helped me along the way, helped me gain knowledge. I did know I had the passion and desire to make sure that these heroes were taken care of. So I had to learn the ins and outs of gaining sponsors, uh, gaining partnerships like Nine Line Apparel, and making sure that we're raising enough money to take care of the heroes that we have in our program. And I want to be there to also help veterans. I knew that when I left my job to start this organization and run it full time, that I was leaving behind my retirement, that I was leaving behind everything I had guaranteed in my life and in my career, everything I worked for in the military, police, and federal service. And I wanted to make sure that I was doing what I felt was right for these animals. Since they spent their entire career protecting us, I wanted to take that and spend the rest of mine protecting them. So I would encourage any veteran who has a passion, who has a dream, to at least attempt it, to go out there and fulfill that dream. And I think if you believe in yourself, you believe in your skills, and you put the right people around you, that no matter how big your dream is, you can see that come to fruition. 
as long as you're willing to work hard enough to earn it. Currently, Project K9 Hero has 177 acres in Middle Tennessee, and we're trying to build a state-of-the-art facility for these retired police canines and military working dogs that have nowhere else to go, just like Canine Yubi here. We are working on getting sponsorships for our capital campaign. People can check that out on our website at projectk9hero.org. Check the capital campaign video and learn about what we're trying to build. We're trying to establish a 14-run rehab rehoming kennel that's going to help these heroes have a place to go when they have nowhere else to turn after their service. So we're looking for sponsors, we're looking for organizations to get involved to help us with our capital campaign and make sure every hero has a home. One of the biggest things we're working on this year is our Canine Hero Awards that's being hosted in Washington, D.C. on November 4th at Mellon Auditorium. We're currently looking for sponsors to help with our program to make sure that we can showcase our police canines, our military working dogs, to our nation. Currently, we have over 100 congressional members signed up as co-hosts, and we're really excited to showcase what these canine heroes do for our country, what they do for our communities to keep them safe, and how they are so needed in our society. Not only are they needed, that we want to make sure that the general public and our nation's government knows that these heroes aren't getting the help that they deserve in retirement, and Project Canine Heroes is trying to spread awareness and raise recognition for everything they do for us and make sure that they're being taken care of with medical care, food, and the death benefit assistance that our organization provides. We're going to be showcasing Canine Heroes from seven categories. Each category award winner is going to receive free health care from life from Project Canine Hero to make sure that they're being taken care of in their retirement. Over the last five years since our organization has grown, we've become very well known in the police canine and military working dog community. They know that they can trust Project Canine Hero and give us a call when they have a retired police canine or military working dog that needs a home. We're here to take them in, evaluate them, and make sure that we're placing them with the right forever home or we're taking care of their medical needs for life. And I couldn't think of nothing better to do the rest of my career than to take that experience that I've had training dogs and working with dogs at all levels of government and taking that and making sure the canine heroes who are now retired are getting the care they needed after their service. It was such an honor to have that amount of responsibility on you as a canine handler, knowing that thousands of American lives and lives of citizens from other countries were in your hands. And that's something that I've always cherished as a canine handler, that I feel that it's one of the best jobs in the world. It's one of the most honorable jobs in the world. Uh, once we get our Project Canine Hero Rehabilitation and Rehoming Center established in Tennessee, or get those buildings uh, up so heroes have a place to go, we're really going to be able to take this organization to the next level. I strongly feel we're going to be one of the premier nonprofits for retired police canine and military working dogs anywhere in the world. These dogs are putting their lives on the line for us every day. That they're going out there and they're working right up till they can no longer work. And we as the government or police agency or state agency are not there once they leave service. In fact, we'll work them right up until they medically can't do it anymore. Just like a soldier. And when that soldier or that dog can no longer perform their duties, they're cast aside. And I really think that that's, that's the wrong way to look at it. And before Project K9 Hero, they didn't have much of a voice in Congress. They didn't have much of a voice with our government. But because of my background with training police canines and military working dogs all across the world, I really feel that I'm just the person for these guys. That I can stand up in front of members of our government, showcase, like we're doing at our K9 Hero Awards, what great service they do for our country and teach them about how we can take care of them, how we can get public funding to make sure their medical bills are paid for in retirement, just like we do for our soldiers with our VA program. And that's really going to help us bring awareness to the United States government, which we've been working on so hard with the Canine Hero Act, to take public funding to make sure medical bills are paid for retired heroes. If you would like to be a sponsor or get involved in our Canine Hero Awards, check out our website at projectk9hero.org backslash awards and learn more how you can help us showcase these heroes to the world. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Project K9 Hero. Be sure to check out our website at www.projectk9hero.org. That's the way to do it. Full command, ready, 99. Type 2 control by Misty 31. 133 NA. 25 feet. Vehicles in the open. 